Lux presents Hollywood. Lieber Brothers Company brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Jack Benny and Gail Patrick in Killer Kate. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Very few institutions on the air outdate the Lux Radio Theater. But one of the exceptions is our star tonight, Waukegan's favorite son, Jack Benny. It was 15 years ago that Jack started trying for laughs on the air, and he's still trying. As a matter of fact, we'll have to allow Jack's one of America's top comedians. But tonight he branches out into a different field in a thrilling piece of action drama entitled Killer Cates. Based on a Warner Brothers screenplay, it was adapted especially for Jack's newly discovered dramatic ability and co-stars lovely and talented Gail Patrick. Of course, to get Jack here tonight, we had to add special concessions to the contract not the least of which was a large-sized box of Lux Flakes. In fact, Jack has been counting the contents flake by flake between rehearsals. <laughs> and the gleam in his eye when he discovered they were all there could only be matched, I'm sure, by the gleam in a woman's eye when she sees Lux Flakes on her grocer's shelf. It's a look that says, all's well that ends with Lux. And now, the Lux Radio Theater presents Jack Benny as Killer Cates and Gail Patrick as Helen, with Alan Reed as Al Brady. In this rather unusual story, Mr. Benny plays the part of Jeff Morley, sometimes known as Killer Cates. In the opening scene, we find our cold-blooded killer at the door of his old hideaway. You, Spangler, wait till I get this door open. Spangler, where have you? Killer. Killer Cates. It's, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Blinky, it's me. Well, gee, Killer, I, I didn't know it was you. <laughs> I was just waiting for Spangler to come back. Spangler ain't coming back. Not coming back? Well, it serves him right. He had it coming. I, I was going to knock him off myself. I, I was, Killer. He's the guy that ratted on you. Yeah? Yeah, killer, yeah. Gee, it's good to see you back again. Uh, when'd you get out? Last night, Blinky. I busted out just to see you and Spangler. I just seen Spangler. You, you busted out? Then, then you're hot. Well, don't worry, killer. I'll hide you. You can use my place. So you can put the finger on me like you did last time, eh, Blinky? It, it wasn't me, killer. I swear it wasn't me. It, it was Spangler, I tell you. It was Spangler. He was the guy that... Shut up, you lying rat. Honest, killer. You've got to believe me. I had nothing to do with it. Get down on your knees, Blinky, and start praying. But, killer, please. You can't do this. I'm your pal, your friend. We grew up together. We was like brothers, killer. Please give me a break. You didn't give me a break, did you? When you sent me up to the big house to rot in a lousy cell... You weren't satisfied to take over my racket. You even had to steal my dame. I tell you, I didn't do it, killer. Everything is just the way you left it. And Millie, I didn't steal her. She's still your girl, killer. She's, she's waiting for you. Where do you want it, Blinky? In the belly or the back? <laughs> killer, please give me a chance. I'll, I'll, I'll get out of town. Get down I'll... on your knees, Blinky. No, killer, don't. Don't. I swear I had nothing to do with this, believe me. Start praying, Blinky. Killer! You can't do it! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! <laughs> Killer. So long, Blinky. You were my pal once, but you just couldn't keep your nose clean. Cops! I gotta get out of here! Come on out, Killer. You haven't got a chance. You want me, copper? You'll have to come in and get me. There he goes for the window. Got him! Is he dead? No. No, I'm not dead, copper. Of course I'm not dead. Remember me? I'm Killer Gates. A man who couldn't be killed. <laughs> Keep ringing the curtain up and down, Eddie. He's good for a dozen 
about? Uh, whoever thought this corny show would be a hit. Ah, you gotta hand it to that Jeff Morley, corny or not. He plays that killer case like a real gangster. Get down on your knees and start praying, Blinky. Uh, where do you want it? In the belly or the back? Hey, quiet, 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 quiet. Here he comes. Uh, nice show, Mr. Morley. Thanks, Eddie. Is my manager around? Yeah, Mr. Brady said he'd wait for you in your dressing room. Thanks. Hiya, Jeff. Hello, Brady. I want to talk to you. Fine, and say congratulations, killer. For what? For the 1,000th performance of the man who couldn't be killed. Seems like a million. And stop calling me killer, will you? Bad enough I have to play that part without being reminded of it all the time. Well, you've been doing all right for three years now. But can't you see what's happening to me? Every time I have to shoot a gun, I break into a cold sweat. I'm afraid of guns. They're so noisy. Well, you can't bump off Blinky with a water pistol. His makeup will run. Don't be funny. Imagine me, a killer, standing there with two guns. You gotta use two guns, Jeff. When we tried it with one gun, you used to put your other hand on your hip. <laughs> what? Why don't you forget it, Jeff? Did you see the audience out there tonight? Not an empty seat in the house. I tell you, this play is driving me nuts. I have nightmares. I dream that I'm busting out of prison, taking guys for rides, sticking up banks. Gee, it's getting so every time I walk down the street and see a policeman, I duck. Look, Jeff, what you need is a nice long rest. Go home and relax. Spend some time with your wife. Play a little golf. This is Saturday. You don't have to be back to the theater till Monday night. No. No, Brady. That's not the solution. Don't you understand? I'm a comedian. A comic. All my life I've been a comedian. I don't want to play a gangster. I want to make people laugh. All right. So you're a comedian. What happened when you played comedy? You did a show on Broadway called The Meanest Man in Syracuse. Folded in two weeks. I know. And when you went out to Hollywood to make a picture, what was the name of that epic? Oh, The Bugle Blew at Midnight. Well? The audience blew at nine o'clock. So what? I made a mistake. Anybody's entitled to one mistake. Yeah, but you made yours while you were standing in front of a camera. And everybody who saw that picture's a witness. There weren't many, but they're witnesses. Look, Brady, you can talk till doomsday. But I know how I feel inside. For 25 years, I've been doing comedy, and that's what I want to keep on doing. Jeff, what's the use of kidding? As a comedian, you're lousy. You stink. Oh, you and your innuendos. <laughs> look at the record. Since you gave up comedy and became Killer Cates, look what you got. An estate on Long Island, a butler, three cars, and you're only number 12 in line for a new refrigerator. <laughs> what more do you want? My peace of mind. That's what I want. And it's no use arguing. I'm getting out of this play while I've still got my sanity, my health. Even if it means those one-night stands again. But, Jeff, boy, think of your wife. Think of Helen. I am thinking of Helen. In the mental condition I'm in, what kind of a husband am I? Well, then think of me. I get 10% of your salary. For the last three years, I've been eating. I live in a nice apartment. I wear good clothes. Don't take those things away from me, Jeff. That's what I thought. All you care about is your 10%. Well, I'm through, so you might as well get out of here, Brady, and start looking for a new killer. Now get out. Out. Out! Okay, okay. Ooh. Ooh, my head. Ooh, those... those awful headaches. Uh, pardon me, Mrs. Morley. What is it, Walters? Mr. Brady telephoned. I told him Mr. Morley was asleep, and he said he'd drop in later on. Oh, thank you, Walters. What time is it? 12.15, madam. That late? I think you'd better wake Mr. Morley now. Yes, madam. Mr. Morley? Mr. Morley? Uh -huh. Mr. Morley, wake up, sir. It's 12.15. Listen, Scalise. From now on, you're taking orders from me. Killer Kate, see? Mr. Morley. If you don't like it, you get the same thing that happened to Spangler. You wind up at the bottom of the river with your feet in a barrel of cement. Mr. Morley, Mr. Morley, Take wake your up. dirty mitts off of me before I... What? Where am I? Oh, it's you, Walter. I'm sorry. I, I must have been dreaming. Yes, sir. Uh, what was I saying? Something about a Mr. Scalise, sir. You intimated that in the future he was to receive his instructions from you. Hmm. A darn show again. Can't get it off my mind. Other men dream about Lana Turner. I dream about Dillinger. He's not even wearing a sweater. Walters, tell Mrs. Morley I'll be right down. Yes. Would you like another cup of coffee, dear? No, thanks. I don't feel like eating. 
I tell you, Helen, if I don't get out of this show, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. Jeff, I've never stood in your way. In the old days when you were playing vaudeville, things were pretty tough. I went along hoping you'd get a break. But you must admit that your act always flopped. Well, I was doing all right until my seal died. <laughs> that seal didn't die. You were out of work so long we had to eat it. Well? And what we didn't eat, I had to wear. Well, all I know is I was happier then. Gee, and I had a swell act, too. Smart comedy, high class. Gosh, remember how I used to come out in white flannel pants, double-breasted blue coat with brass buttons, straw hat and cane, and I'd say, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the theater. A panhandler walked up to me and said, hey, mister, I haven't had a bite all week. So I bit him. <laughs> oh, boy, they used to scream at that. Yes, sir, that act is as good today as it ever was. Only maybe I'd have to bring it up to date, you know, take out those General Pershing jokes, you know? And then finish with... You remember I used to finish with that imitation of Ted Lewis? Yes, sir, is everybody happy? <laughs> I don't know. That stuff is surefire. I like it better when you say, where do you want it, Blinky, in the belly or the back? I know. I know, but look at it. Remember, just before Brady got me in the play, you'll have to admit I was a sensation in that nightclub in Atlantic City. But you had to work as a lifeguard in the daytime. I didn't have to. I insisted on it. It kept me in condition. Atlantic City, I was terrific there. I got a million laughs. Who wouldn't in that bathing suit? All right. <laughs> but all right, Jeff, if it means your health and it'll make you any happier, then I'm for it. We'll start all over again, right from the very, very, very bottom. Gee, Helen, you're wonderful. After all, look, we've got what we want. This big house, the butler, three cars. Yes, but when are we going to get the new refrigerator? We're number 12, Oh, Helen, if you only knew how happy I am. I'm the old Jeff Morley again. No kidding. When my baby smiles at me, ha, 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 there's a one... There's someone at the door. Walters, that's probably Mr. Brady. Show him right in. Yes, madam. Brady? How do you like that? He won't even let me alone on Sundays. Well, I'm glad he's here. I'm going to straighten him out once and for all. Hiya, killer. Hello, Helen. Hello, I brought Alan. a couple of fellas I want you should meet. Shake hands with Bob Stanley and Freddie McCall. How do you do? How are you? Glad to know you, killer. Yeah, you too, Mrs. Cates. The name is Morley. I'm sorry, but I've seen you on the stage so many times. To me, you'll always be Killer Cates. Oh, no, I won't. Brady, I got news for you. I've talked the whole thing over with Helen, and I'm quitting the show. It ain't as easy as that, Jeff. You've got a run-of-the-play contract, and they won't let you out of it. You can't quit. Then I'll walk out. But, Jeff, can you do that? If he does, he'll never work in the theater again as long as he lives. Hmm. So that's the way it is. Well... I guess... I guess I can't do anything about it. Now you're being smart, Jeff. That play will run another three years, you'll be a millionaire. So what good is money? I'll end up with a gold-plated straight, Jack. Look, Jeff, when the show closes, you'll have plenty of time to enjoy life. In the meantime, let's cash in. There's a lot of extra gravy around. Gravy? What do you mean? I finally got you set for a radio deal. Radio? Yeah. Well, that sounds all right. Why, sure. It's a 15-minute program, five times a week. Stanley and McCall here have written a terrific script. Oh, oh. Well, you hear it. It's dynamite. But won't that interfere with the play? Not at all. He'll be off the air by 8.15. The curtain don't go up till 8.30. He can eat his dinner in a taxi. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Brady. Is this, uh, is this that comedy program you were talking about? No, no, I couldn't get a sponsor interested in that. This one is a natural. We got the radio rights to the man who couldn't be killed. You're going on the air as Killer Cates. What? Killer Cates on the air? Nothing doing. Now, I know this is awful sudden, oh, Jeff, but no, the money what? is sensational. In a couple of years, you'll be able to quit and do comedy for the rest of your life in empty theaters. But look at it. Wait I... till you hear this script. Brady, Go I'm ahead, not... fellas. Explain look, it to me. Look, I'm not well, going to... Well, the program opens with you in a tough spot. You shoot your way through Scalise's oh, mob. You sure kill about eight of them, but the town gets too hot for you, so you take it on the land. Just until the heat is off. You're in a town in Jersey laying low, see, for a few days. Then you start a crave action, you go out and you get it. No, him. no, I'm not Then you walk to into the Maramba, the biggest nightclub in town. And you tell the boss he's through, but there's a mile there who tries to put the finger on but you. But you stage a one-man gang war and you take over. Stop, fellas, please. I tell you, I'm not and going to And you have to go out and kill a couple of cops. You're running things your Scalise way. Scalise is out to get it's you. It's a pitch battle. You're the man who couldn't be killed. You'll kill a case. Kill a case. Kill a case. Look, fellas, you're wasting your time. I'm not going Scalise's to go through it. Scalise's The heat is on. You walk into the Maramba. The Maramba. The Maramba. But the mile puts the finger on you. things your way. You kill two cops. Three cops. Four cops. Ten cops. You'll kill a case. Stop. I tell you, you're driving me nuts. I'm not going... Oh. Oh, my head. 
Jeff. Jeff. Darling, what's the matter? Oh. Walters. Walters, call the doctor. Mr. Morley has fainted. <laughs> In a moment, we'll present Act Two of Killer Cakes, starring Jack Benny and Gail Patrick. Well, Libby, are you all set for the big charity event on Wednesday? Am I? I wouldn't miss it. It's the first world premiere held here in five years. The Yearling will make its much-heralded debut that night. That's Metro Goldwyn Mayer's latest bid for the Academy Awards. I hear the picture is as great as the book. Well, the author, Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings, is delighted. The studio showed me a wire from her saying how thrilled she was with the picture. She thought Gregory Peck and Jane Wyman were perfect casting as the Baxters. And she loved Claude Jarman, Jr., who plays the part of their son, Jody. From all I've heard, Claude is young Jody to the life. A, a youngster that really gets at your heart. And those Technicolor shots of the Florida pine woods are as outstanding as the cast. What did the stars do for recreation while they were on location in the woods? There must have been some weather delays while they were filming The Yearling. Well, Gregory Peck spent his free time fishing. And Jane Wyman spent some of hers knitting. Knitting? Mm-hmm. Sweated for herself. She loves them. And she has a special trick with them. Like washing them in Lux Place? <laughs> well, of course. All smart girls do that, so sweaters keep their fit. One of Jane's tricks is tacking in little shoulder pads, so her sweaters look trim as a blouse. Do you think, Libby, that all the ladies in our audience know how much Lux Care does for a sweater? Mm, considering some of the shrunken ones I've seen, I guess not. Well, why don't you tell them how easy luxing is? Well, all the equipment you need is some rust-proof pins and a piece of clean wrapping paper. Take your sweater and draw an outline around it on the paper. Then squeeze the sweater in rich, lukewarm Lux suds, ever so quickly so as not to felt the wool. Now, rinse it well, and this is important. Have the rinse water the same lukewarm temperature as the suds. Next, squeeze out the drippings by rolling the sweater in a bath towel. Then lay it on the outline, pat and push it into shape, and hold it there with pins. When it's dry, it fits. As Libby said, rich suds are important for getting good results with wool. And Lux flakes go a long way. Lux care is really thrifty. Here's your producer, William Keeley. We continue with the second act of Killer Cates, starring Jack Benny as Jeff Morley, alias Killer Cates, and Gail Patrick as his wife, Helen. A few moments ago, when we left Jeff Morley, he was flat on the floor with a nervous collapse. Well, he's resting in bed now, while in another room, Dr. Elberon solemnly explains his diagnosis to Jeff's wife, Helen, and his manager, Al Brady. And as I see it, Jeff is suffering from nervous fatigue more than anything else. He needs absolute quiet and a good long rest. Sure, good night's sleep, and he'll be ready to go to work tomorrow. It'll be a long time before he's ready to go back on the stage, Mr. Brady. Several weeks, perhaps. Several weeks? Well, what about the show? Without Jeff, it'll fold up. No, no, we can't do it. Helen, we'll have to get another doctor. Oh, now, wait a minute, Al. I'm not going to sacrifice Jeff for your corny show. You'll have to get yourself another actor. Uh, Helen, where can I get an actor cornier than him? Are there any further instructions, Doctor? Yes, yes. Keep all conversation away from that play. Don't even mention the words Killer Cates. Yes, Doctor. You see, it's his impersonation of Killer Cates that's brought about this condition. Basically, Jeff is a sensitive type with a natural antipathy to that sort of character, all of which has resulted in these definite symptoms of schizophrenia. Uh, uh, what? Schizophrenia. The doctrine of two distinct ultimate substances. Ah. It's the disease of the mind, Al. Holy smoke, how did he get it? <laughs> well, I gotta call up the newspapers. I'll tell him that Jeff's got schizo... Schiz uh, I'll tell him he's got two ultimate substances. <laughs> Who's that? Just me, Jeff. I hope I didn't wake you. Where are you going? Just to open the window. My, this room's stupid. What's that? Why, nothing, dear. Just a car backfiring. What are you giving me? Those are gunshots. That must be Scalise's mob. Scalise's mob? Oh, darling, you're having another nightmare. Now get right back in bed. The doctor said... Come here, you. Oh, 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 please. Please, you're twisting my wrist. Oh, Who oh, sent God. you here? Oh, darling. Darling, you're hysterical. I'll call the doctor. Don't touch that phone. Oh, oh please let me go. It's... I will when I get good and ready. Oh. 
Say, you're not a bad-looking dish. <laughs> What's your name? Darling, it's me, Helen. Don't you even recognize me? I never saw you before in my life. But I'm going to make up for lost time. <laughs> Come here, baby. Give me a kiss. Oh, darling, kiss me again. <laughs> <laughs> Happens every time. Anyway, baby, that'll hold you till I get back. Get back? Where are you going? What do you think I am, a sucker? Think I'm going to open up to you so you can tip off the mob and put the finger on me? But I... But, darling, oh, what are you doing? Come on, but get I... in this closet. Come on! But you can't... Let me out! Let me out! Shut up or I'll come in there and slug you! That's better. Now to get out of here. Who's that? It's I, sir. Walter. Oh, I didn't know you were up. Dear, and I was given orders not to disturb you. Listen, you mug, I'm Killer Cates. I'm giving orders around here, see? Very amusing, sir. Wipe that smile off your kisser. Oh, but... Wipe it off! Oh, you struck me, sir. <laughs> this leaves me no alternative. I'll leave for Reno in the morning. <laughs> what? I live there, you know. Shut up. Now, listen, you. Where do they keep the scratch around here? The what, sir? The scratch, the moolah, the money. The money, sir? Why, it's in the safe. Well, lead me to it. But, sir, you know where the... <gasps> now, leave me to that safe and don't give me no more of your lip. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this way, sir. There it is, sir, behind the picture. Hey, wait a minute. Who's that mug in the picture? But, sir... Never mind, I can read the nameplate. Hmm. Jeff Morley, star of stage and screen. What a conceited punk. Yes, sir. Now, watch the front door. Let me know if he comes in. Now, come on, what's the combination of this safe? I don't know, sir. Hmm. Then get out of the way. Out of the way. I can open this tin can with boxing gloves on. There. It's come. A cinch. Ah, look at those bills. Fifties, hundreds. What a haul! But, sir, don't you understand Shut that up. you're... Own... It's for the new refrigerator, sir. I don't care what it's for. Now, turn around. Face the wall. Yes, sir. Sir, what are you going to do with that vase? I'm going to... Oh! I guess I should have told him first. <laughs> well, that takes care of him. <laughs> look out, Scalise. Here comes Killer Kate. And I got out of the closet, Dr. Elbron, just in time to see Jeff driving away. How do you like that, Doc? Held up his own house and stole his own car. That's awesome. <clears throat> now, Walters. Uh, yes, Dr. Elbron. Did Mr. Morley give any indication of where he was going? Uh, no, sir. He was most irrational. He said he was Killer Kate. And he asked me where we kept the money. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's call the police. Under no condition will we call the police. But, Doctor, why not? Because Jeff thinks he's Killer Cates. And what does Killer Cates do to policemen? He asks them where they want it. In the belly? Exactly. Or the... <laughs> oh, then we've got to find him ourselves. At once. Why, he's liable to hurt somebody. <laughs> Head. I wonder where I am. Your killer Kate, you lay alone. Your killer Kate, you're in chase. The heat's on. You're walking in the Miranda. Your killer Kate, killer Kate, killer Kate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm killer Kate. The heat's on. I gotta lay low here in Jersey. Then I take over the biggest nightclub in town. What's that name? The Miranda. Yeah, the Miranda. That's it. Hmm, what's this place? Car. What's the name of this joint? The Pelican Club. Well, I'm looking for the Maramba, the biggest nightclub in Jersey. Maramba? Never heard of it. This is the biggest nightclub in Jersey. The Pelican, eh? So they changed the name. Well, they ain't fooling Killer Cates. I'm moving in. 
Yeah, I'll park your car for you. Oh, no, you don't. See that car where it is. And keep the motor running. Slow. I'm almost out of gas. <laughs> yes, Were you looking for somebody? Who are you? I'm Mario, the head waiter. Well, I'm Killer Cates, your new boss, see? From now on, you're taking orders from me. But I don't understand. Mr. Norton didn't mention anything about selling the plates. Norton? Who's Norton? He's the boss. Hey, cut that out! I told you I'm the boss. Now get out of my way. Hey, waiter! Waiter, come here. Yes, sir? Who's a tomato out there singing? Peaches Mason, sir. She's the star of the show. Mm. Easy on the eyes, ain't she? Wait, get me a double bourbon. I'll sit down here. Oh, but, sir, this table... Shut up and do like I told you. Yes, sir. Mario. Yes, Miss Mason? Who's that tourist at Mr. Norton's table? I don't know. He calls himself a killer case. He says that from now on... He was the boss. Oh, that loud jerk. He almost ruined my number. Why don't you throw him out? You know Mr. Norton don't like any rough stuff when the place is full of customers. Hey, waiter. Bring a double bourbon before I tear this joint apart. Hey, you. What's the big idea? Peaches Mason, eh? I like that name. Sit down, baby. I want to talk to you. Listen, mister. This is Joe Norton's table, and if you know what's good for you... I never joined the guest. I said sit down. All right. Keep your voice down. Everybody's staring at us. So what? Let me give you a tip, sister. Keep your nose clean. What? Don't play dumb. You know what happened to Spangler, don't you? He's at the bottom of the river with his feet in a barrel of cement. Cement? Hard to get nowadays, but I got connections. <laughs> you know, baby... I like the way you... Get bourbon, sir. Set it right down here. Well, baby, here's to you. <coughs> Boy, that's good. <laughs> well, ain't you gonna drink the rest of it? Nah. I always save a little to fill my lighter. <laughs> now, listen, baby. I like your looks. See? I like the way you stack up. You're wasting your time, big boy, because I'm Joe Norton's girl. Norton is through, washed up. I'm going to wrap up this town, put it in my back pocket. Baby, you just stick with me. You'll have a butler, three cars, and a sealskin coat. Now, all you got to do is... Excuse me, Mr. Mason, but Mr. Norton would like to see this gentleman in his office. Ah, Mr. Norton knows I mean business, eh? Lead the way, punk. Punk! (laughs) You heard me, you heard me. Get going! So Norton's worried, eh? Well, they all worry when a killer moves in. A pelican club. I think I'll change that name. I don't like it. I don't like a lot of things around here. I don't even like... This is it. Come in. Uh, Mr. Norton, I'd like you to meet the new boss. The gentleman I was telling you about. (laughs) Meet Mr. Cates. Well, step right in, Mr. Cates. That's all, Mario, and close the door after you. Yes, sir. <laughs> so you're Norton, eh? Who are these two mugs? Oh, excuse me. Allow me to introduce my two assistants, Lefty Ryan and Steve Kapouris. Charmed, I'm sure. Such a sentido of half privilege. Mr. Cates, I want to apologize for asking you to come all the way back here, but you see, we don't like to throw anybody out the front door. It gives the place a bad name. All right, Lefty, throw this bum out in the alley. This is indeed a rare privilege. Take your hands off of me. Come on, you. Ah. Anybody else feel like throwing me out? Oh, what tough guy, huh? Wait a well, minute, I'll Steve. Just... All right, Cates, the back door's right behind you. Now get out. Gun don't scare me, Norton. I'm gonna walk over there and take it away from you. Stay where you are. I'm warning you. You can't pull the trigger, Norton. You ain't got the guts. I'm telling you for the last time. One more step and I'll shoot. Go ahead. I'm the man who couldn't be killed. Give me that gun. I got it, Norton. 
And Killer Cates ain't afraid to use it. Killer Cates? That name sounds familiar. Yeah, darn right it's familiar. You know something, Norton? I think I'm going to like this new office. Hey, that's a nice-looking safe you got there. Okay, Norton, open it. But I... Oop, I said open it. All right. Don't hit me again. I'll do it. There. It's open. Well, come on, come on. Hand over the money. Hey, you. Come here and put this dough in the satchel. And be quick about it. Is, is it all right, boy? I'm the boss around Nobody here. Nobody tells you, Steve. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Well, that's... That's all the money I got. Yeah? What about that ten box? Yeah, but I... Oh, get it out! There's nothing in it. Just a bunch of canceled checks. Well, get it out. I'm taking everything. All right. There. Thanks. Now get down on your knees, Norton, and start praying. Killer. Killer, please, please, don't shoot. Oh, don't kill me. I don't want to die. <laughs> I'll do anything you say. Only please don't kill me. G give me a break, will you? You didn't give me a break, did you? When you sent me up to the big house to rot in a lousy cell? You weren't satisfied to take over my rackets. You even had to steal my dame. Well, me? But Killer, I didn't do any of those things. You, you, you got me mixed up with some other guy. You gotta believe me, Killer. <laughs> I swear it wasn't Where me. Where do you want it, Norton? In the belly or the back? <laughs> no, no, no. No, Killer, no, please. I'm telling you the truth. I, I, I didn't take your Come business. On. I opened this place myself six months ago. On a GI loan. Now, wait a minute. And it's for Peaches. Peaches, I didn't know she was your girl. That's right, Killer. He's telling the truth. Uh -huh. Hey, there's something fishy around this. No, no, Killer, Killer, please. Give me a chance. I'll get out of town. I'll do anything. All right, Martin. I... Okay, but I'm warning you. You come back, you get the same thing that happened to Spangler. He's at the bottom of the river with his feet in a barrel of cement. Cement? Yeah, I got connections. <laughs> okay, Norton, now blow. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, killer. I'll grab the next train. I, I won't come back, killer. Honest, I won't. Well, see that you don't. Now, you, Steve, pick up that satchel and come with me. Oh, okay, killer. You're the boss. Hey, killer, slow down, will you? You're doing 80 miles an hour. <laughs> no worries, Steve. I'm going to grab back. Count the dough we took from Norton. Oh, okay, boss. Uh, it's all in $1,000 packages. There's 10 of them here. Okay, take five for yourself. Five Gs for me? Sure. Killer Kate's always splits 50-50 with the guys that work for him. Yeah, but, but, but I wasn't working for you then. You are now, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, I'll say I am. Five G's. Oh, boy, am I happy. Where's me harmonica? Put that away. I don't want no trouble with Petrillo. <laughs> ah, put it away. Gosh, five G's. Wait till I tell the boys about this. The boys? The rest of Norton's mob. They'll all want to wait for you now. Okay, well, get them together. Have them bring their artillery. I'm going to take over this town, and I'm going to start tonight. <laughs> we pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Before our stars, Jack Benny and Gail Patrick, return in Act Three of Killer Cates, I'd like to present our guest of the evening, an English girl from Australia, lovely blonde Joan Winfield. Presentations hold no terror for Joan because she's already made a bow before one of the most famous audiences in the world, the court of the King and Queen of England. I'm afraid that was a little different, Mr. Keeley. I didn't have to do any talking. <laughs> I see. What have you been doing since Warner Brothers induced you to come to Hollywood? Well, I've made seven pictures, and when I'm not before the cameras, I'm visiting other sets. Did you see the filming of Warner Brothers' new thriller, the picture Sidney Greenstreet and Peter Laurie have just finished? The verdict? Uh-huh. Oh, yes, and it was so exciting. But what impressed me especially on the Warner lot 
was the lavish sets for their new musical, The Time, The Place, and The Girl. The colors were so right. Mm, that's important in Technicolor. I was so interested, too, in the treadmill used for rehearsing the dance numbers. Well, interesting isn't the word Jack Carson and Dennis Morgan would have used. They covered 20 miles a day on that treadmill. Well, I was amazed that Janice Page and Martha Vickers wore stockings for all that rehearsing. In Australia during the war, we saved stockings for special occasions. Well, of course, Joan, the girls' stockings were luxed. That's why they lasted so long. Girls often get as much wear from one pair of stockings that are luxed as they do from two pairs washed the wrong way. Well, I do know Lux stockings last longer, Mr. Kennedy. Twice as long. A famous laboratory proved by strain tests. They washed identical stockings two different ways. Some women use a strong soap for stockings, you know. Well, stockings washed that way broke down into runs in almost no time. But the stockings that had been washed with Lux lasted twice as long as the others. That extra wear is as good as an extra pair. You're so right, Mr. Kennedy. You can't imagine how wonderful it is to find a box of Lux Flakes in the store. Yes, girls everywhere appreciate the extra stocking wear Lux gives them. These days, we're not able to make all the Lux women want, but we're doing our best to keep dealers supplied. So keep asking for it. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. After the play, we'll invite Jack Benny to step out of his role as Killer Cates and join us for a brief chat with tonight's stars. Here they are in Act Three. Jack Benny as Jeff Morley, and Gail Patrick as Helen. For hours now, Helen and Dr. Elbrun have searched in vain for Jeff. Back at home, they find Al Brady waiting for them, wildly flourishing a newspaper. Helen, Doc, have you read the papers? The papers? No, Al, what do they say? Listen to this. Daring thugs menace Daleville, New Jersey. Reign of terror, Grip City. According to one of the victims, David Franklin, gas station owner, he had just locked up for the night when four thugs broke in and demanded that he hand over all the money in his cash register. When Franklin resisted, the leader of the thugs threatened him with the same thing that happened to Spangler, asserting that Spangler was at the bottom of the river with his feet continued on page two. Uh, uh, with his feet uh, in a barrel of cement. The victim also mentioned that the killer mumbled something about bumping off 11 people so he could be first in line for a new refrigerator. Spangler with his feet in cement. Well, that dialogue's right out of the play. Sure, sure, that's Jeff, all right. He really believes he's killer Kate. Oh, we gotta stop him before he goes and does any more damage. Oh, poor Jeff. Come on, we'll use my car. It's only an hour's drive to Daleville. Gosh, Jeff must have made a pilot dough with those gangsters. I hope nothing happens to my husband. Hope nothing happens to my 10%. Well, killer, how do you like the house? Not bad, Steve I think we'll spend a little lettuce and fix it up Put bulletproof glass in the windows, get some steel shutters and doors And we'll have the classiest joint on the south side Wouldn't Norton be burnt up if he knew we was using his summer house for a hideaway? <laughs> well, I sure gotta hand it to you, killer you certainly get action in a hurry. First you take over Norton's club, then his gang, and now you've even got his house. Yeah. You left out something else, Peaches. Yeah? What's that? I got his girl, too. <laughs> Come here, baby. Let the killer take off some of that lipstick. Oh. Killer. You're terrific. <laughs> And there's more where that came from. <laughs> now, look, baby. Nobody knows you're true in with us, see? So you're running the case to club. Give it to once over. I want to make sure that Mario's keeping his nose clean. Okay, killer. Wait a minute. Yeah. What's this tin box here? Well, that's the thing we took from Norton's safe, killer. You know, we said it was just canceled checks. Well, let's have a look at it. Hmm. That check's all right. Pay to the order of John Graham, $5,000. Signed, Joe Norton. Paid a John Graham, 2500 John Graham, 3000 Say, who is this mug, John Graham? Oh, he's the mayor. Norton was paying him off. What? Mm-hmm. Hey, then this is the best haul yet. Give me an envelope. What are you going to do, boss? I'm going to send these checks to the district attorney. What? Sure. When the DA gets these checks, he'll go right after the mayor. The politicians will start fighting among themselves. The cops won't know which way to turn. I can put this town in my back pocket. Here, mail this, Peaches. Oh, gee, killer. Oh, you think of everything. Yeah. I just thought of something else. 
Before you go, let me take off some more of that lipstick. Mm. Hey, I like the taste of that. You keep putting it on, and I'll keep taking it off. <laughs> Come on, let's do it again. I'm telling you, Graham, I'm on a spot. You gotta get me off. You can do it. You're the mayor. I'm sorry, Norton. Election's only two weeks away. I have my own troubles, not to mention the gambling ship. You're gonna have a lot more trouble if this killer Kate stays on the loose. I'm supposed to be out of town right now. I'm liable to be bumped off any minute. We all have to take a bath sometime, Joe. Maybe it's your turn to be washed up. Oh, yeah? Well, if I go to the cleaners, you're going with me. What do you mean? Wouldn't the DA be surprised to find our honest mayor gets 15% of all the take in this town? And how's he going to find out? There's a little matter of a few canceled checks that I made out to you. They're going to look very pretty in court. You wouldn't dare turn in those checks. You're in it as deep as I am. But Killer Cates isn't, and he's got the checks. What? You heard me. He stole them out of my safe. This DA's been gunning for me for five years, and if he ever gets his hands on those checks... Huh? Can't let the police get hold of them either. I don't trust the commissioner. I think he's honest. There's only one way to do it, but it's going to cost a few grand. I'll have to put a new mob together and get Killer Kate. How much will it take? Oh, about 10 Gs. Very well. Just don't spend any more than you have to. Remember, it's the taxpayer's money. So if you're smart, Mario, you'll watch your step around this club. Don't worry about me, Peaches. I don't want my feet in the cement, even if it's Grumman's Chinese. Did you forget what happened to Spangler? Oh. Mm. Pardon me, but I wonder if you could give us some information. We're looking for a man who calls himself Killer Cates. What made you think you'd find him here? Well, we've been to every nightclub in town. You see, we have reason to believe he'd be at one of them. Huh? Who are you? I'm his wife. His what? He never told me he was married. Well, then you know him. Oh, please, tell me, where is he? If I find out he's been too Miss, it's vitally me, important I'm... that we find this man immediately. You see, there are a few things we have to straighten out with him. Yeah, and I got a few things to straighten out with him myself. Okay, come along, follow me. Peaches, you're playing with the dynamite. Killer or no killer, I gotta know where I stand. Peaches. Hmm, what a doll. There's nobody in the play like that. Jeff must be ad libbing. <laughs> well, he can't be altogether out of his mind. No, sir. <laughs> Who is it? Me, Peaches. Ah, it's about time you got back. Yeah. Come on in, Mrs. Kate. Mrs. Kate? Hey, wait a minute. Who's the company? Yeah. Who's that twist in the two mugs? Jeff. Oh, Jeff, it's me, Helen. Don't you even recognize me? Jeff. Nobody here by that name. Say, I remember you now. You're Scalise's mouth. Jeff, snap out of it. Please, Jeff. It's Helen, your wife, the girl you married. Think back. Remember our honeymoon. Niagara Falls. Those gin rummy games. <laughs> hey, what is this? What about a killer? What about that line you was handing me about us getting married? Well, start talking. Shut up. I'm not shutting up until I find out where I stand. Oh, you and your sealskin coat. Button your lip before I let you have it. Ought to do it anyway for bringing these monkeys in here. Oh, Jeff, please. Wait a minute, Helen. Let me do the talking. Now, Jeff, you're going to listen to me. And you're going to listen to this. <laughs> Out like a light killer, you sure pack a mean wallop. What do you want to do with these other phonies? Throw them out. Wait a minute, Jeff. Try to concentrate. This is Dr. Elburn talking to you. I'm your friend. And I'm Helen. Look at me, darling. Look at me. I am looking at you. You're not bad. <laughs> Steve. Yeah, killer? I changed my mind. Just throw these two mugs out. I'm going to keep the dame. Oh, no, you don't. I say she goes. You stay out of this. Well, you, you can talk to Wait a like minute. Wait night. a minute. <laughs> you don't have to fight, girl. There's enough of me for both of you. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> hey, what's that? What's hey, that? wait a minute. It's Norton. He's got a mob with him. Norton, eh? I told him to get out of town. If he wants action, he came to the right place. Yeah, stay away from that window. Oh. Jeff. They got the killer. Is he hit bad? I don't know yet. Oh, Dr. Elbron, help me take Jeff into the other room. Hey, Peaches, did you stir Norton's mob over here? No, no, I didn't, Steve. Honest, I didn't. Hey, look, you gotta believe hey, me. We'll talk about that later. Stay with him, boys. We can't let the killer down. Here, here. We're just laying down on the couch. Yeah, there. Doctor, is Jeff, is he hurt badly? It's a flesh wound. The bullet grazed his temple. Oh, look, he's coming too. Oh. Oh, my head. Jeff. Are you all right? Helen, get a glass of water. Yes, doctor. Oh. What's this? 
I'm bleeding. Now, take it easy, Jeff. <laughs> take it easy. It's only a scratch. You'll be all right. Here's the water, Doctor. Yeah, thanks. Now, take this pill, Jeff. It'll make you feel better. Yeah. Helen. Dr. Albert. Jeff. Oh, Doctor, he's himself again. The sudden shock did it. Now, how do you feel now, Jeff? Gee, I had the most terrible nightmare. I dreamt that I was Killer Kate, and I went to New Jersey. I met a man named uh, Norton. Got mixed up in a gang war. It was awful. Jeff, it... It wasn't a dream. What? No dream? No, Jeff. You actually did all those things. You were out of your mind. What's the noise? What's the shot? It's Norton's men. They're shooting at us. Your game's outside in the other room. Well, what are we going to do? We'll all be killed. Where's Brady? Get Brady. He always knows what to do. I'm afraid Brady. he can't help us now. He can't help us. Killer Kate, you knocked him off. There, there's only one thing to do, Jeff. Oh, no. You've got to go out there and pretend you're Killer Kate. Me? It's our only chance to get out of this mess. But, but, but I, I can't do it. Look, at I'm liable. I'm liable to get killed. Doctor, we can't send Jeff out there. But don't you see? If those men find out that Jeff isn't Killer Kate, their fearless leader who got them into this predicament, they'll turn on him in a second. He's right, Jeff. You have to go through with it. But, but what can I do? I'm a coward. I'm not even a brave coward. I mean, I'm afraid. Get out there and try to call off this gang war. Make peace with Norton. Give him back his gang, his, his nightclub. And his girl. Promise him anything that will get us out of here alive. Can you do it, Jeff? Sure I can. I'm an actor. I'll give him the best performance they've ever seen. Give me that gun. Now, I'm Killer Kate, see? The man who couldn't be killed. From now on, I'm giving orders around here, see? How'd you like that? Oh, that's fine, Jeff. But you better use two guns. Your hand was on your hip again. Oh. <laughs> now, go on out there, Jeff. And, darling, please be careful. Hey, fellas, look, the killer is back! Yeah, boy, yeah, we yeah. thought he was done for. Uh, now we'll show Norton who's born. Yeah, give it to him. I mean, give it to him. We'll wipe out every one of them. Rush in the house. Hey, stop him, boy, stop him. Don't let him in. For my sake, boy, you gotta protect the old killer. Save me! Hey, there's something wrong with the killer, isn't there? Yeah, not Don't once in the last half hour has he mentioned what happened to Spangler. Don't stand there gossiping. Shoot back! All right, nobody move. We got you covered. Oh, okay, you win, Norton. Drop your guns. Well, you're not so tough now, are you, killer? Look, look, Mr. Norton. There's been a great mistake. I'm not really a killer at all. I'm an actor. What are you trying to pull? That's right, Mr. Norton. I can prove it. I'm his wife. And yeah. I'm his doctor. Uh -huh. I can certify this man was suffering from schizophrenia and not accountable for his actions. Yeah, that's it. That's it. My, my name is really schizophrenia. I mean, I mean, Jeff Schizzy. I mean, Schizzy Morley. I, I mean, look, how could I be a killer? It's, it's only a joke. <laughs> but please, please believe me. You can't talk your way out of this. Hey, hey, what's this? Hiding behind a couch, huh? Come on out, Peaches. Joe, Joe, you, you gotta listen to me. I was for you all the Shut time. Shut up, you little double-crosser. I'll take care of you later. Please. Please, Mr. Norton, I'll do anything you, you want. I'll give you anything if you'll only let me out of here. Believe me, I, I'm not Killer Kate. Shut up. Yes, sir. Now, where are those canceled checks you stole from my safe? Checks? I don't, I don't remember any checks, sir. He's lying, Joe. I know where they are. The killer mailed them to the DA this afternoon. Then they've been already picked up. They must be in the post office by now. What do we do now, Joe? We've got to get those checks before they reach the DA. We're going to crack the post office. The post office? But, Joe, that's federal stuff. We don't want to fool around with that federal stuff. Don't worry, we're not going to do it. Hey, you. Who, me? Yeah, you. You're going to crack the post office. No, 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 no. Helen, doctor, don't let him take me. Ouch! I'm doing the slapping now. Let me take these people downstairs, lock them in the cellar. No, no, just uh, come on, come on, hey, everybody, get moving. Hey, what about me, Joe? You're going to take me with you, ain't you? No, no, Peaches, you and me, we're through. Now, come on, killer. You're going to crack the post office and get those canceled checks. I won't do it. I won't, I tell you. Now, put down that gun. What's the matter, killer? Are you yellow? No. No, I'm not yellow. Then why are you shivering? It's that darn cold strike. <laughs> Isn't it awful? You know, personally, I think... Shut that up. Get... Oh. Yes, sir. Come on, boys, let's go. Goodbye, peaches. <laughs> oh, he thinks he's through with me, huh? We'll see about that. I'm going to kill two birds with one phone call. Hello? Operator, get me to the police department. Push me around, will they? Hello? Look, I, I'm giving you a tip. Killer Cates and Joan Norton are on their way downtown to hold up the post office. What? Oh, never mind who this is. Just a very dear friend of theirs. 
How long has he been in the post office, Steve? Fifteen minutes. Long enough to get those canceled checks. Come on, boys. We're going in and get him. All right, killer. Your time is up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Norton. I've been looking all through these mailbags. I can't find the canceled checks. Honest, I can't. Where do you want it, killer? In the belly or in the back? In the belly. In the back. I mean, any place. I've, I've ticklish in both places. <laughs> Honest, I couldn't find the checks. What's that you got in your hands? Oh, j- just some old letters I found. Let me see them. Hmm. I can't stand Jack Benny because... I can't stand him either. Honest, I can't. Honest, I can't. All right, killer, this is your last chance. Cops. It is a frame. Drop your guns. You haven't got a chance. Okay, okay, don't shoot. You got us. Run him up, men. Norton, where's Killer Cates? There he is on the floor. Looks like we got him, Chief. Ah. Yep, that's Killer Cates, all right. <laughs> And he's supposed to be a tough guy. What do you mean, Chief? Isn't he dead? Dead nothing. He fainted. Anyway, Helen, as soon as the shooting started, I pretended I was hit and (laughs) dropped to the floor. The chief of police said you fainted. I was only acting. Well, your acting was so good, it took them four hours to bring you to. Well, I might have overacted a little, you know. <laughs> uh, Jeff, are you sure you're well enough to do the show tonight? Never felt better in my life, Doctor. You know, somehow I'm looking forward to playing Killer Cates again. I guess it's because I feel that, that now I've actually lived the part. Jeff, I'll never forget the way you kissed me when you thought you were Killer Cates. <laughs> then let's refresh your memory, Helen. You mean like that? Well, no. But I'd rather have you this way. Hmm. Jeff... I'm so glad nothing happened to you because... Oh, because... What, Helen? Well... Doctor, you take it. Doctor? Doctor, what is it? While you were gone, they delivered the new refrigerator. <laughs> oh, goody! Come on, let's make some ice cream. <laughs> Stars will return for their curtain calls in a moment. You look bursting with knowledge, Sally. Did you know, Mr. Kennedy, that once it was a great honor to take care of worms? What kind of bait is this? Well, there's a tradition that back in 500 B.C. in China, the court ladies used to draw lots, and the lucky ones could take care of the silkworms in the court silkworm nursery. I know the Chinese were the first people to reel silk off the cocoons. And were probably the first people to wear any sort of silk underthings, too. It's too bad they didn't have Lux Flakes then to take care of their silks and under things. But aren't we lucky to have Lux? I'm sure you are. Especially now that there's so much pretty lingerie back in the stores again. Mmm, real silk and the most luscious lacy rayons. I wouldn't dream of washing them any way but the Lux way. And that pays, Sally, because Lux Care keeps under things color fresh and lovely three times as long. The Lux people have actual tests made by an impartial laboratory to back up that statement. When they compared the Luxed Slips and Nighties with those washed the wrong way with a strong soap, they found an amazing difference. The Luxed ones were so much brighter and newer looking. Back to Mr. Keeley and our stars. It's time for our stars to take a bow. I'm right here, Bill. Uh, Jack, please, let me finish. (laughs) It's curtain call time, and here are the stars who gave us such a thrilling evening of suspense and drama. Jack Benny and Gail Patrick. You know, Jack, now that it's over, I can honestly say you gave us a superb example of dramatic acting. Really brilliant. Well, thanks, Bill. I guess there's no room for argument there. (laughs) (laughs) Now, do I get to keep my soap? (laughs) You certainly do. (laughs) Jack, may I say something, too? Certainly, Gail. What is it? You ought to play more romantic roles in pictures. Me? Romantic roles? Sure, Jack. When you kissed me, it was wonderful. Really? <laughs> when it comes to kissing, you could teach a lot to Robert Taylor and Clark Gable, Tyrone Power. I know, but I'd feel so silly kissing them. You... <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, Bill, as long as you like my work so much, I've got another great script, a magnificent dramatic piece for next week. Y- you mean for Lux? No, for money. I mean for the Lux, <laughs> the Lux Radio Theater, yeah. But, Jack, we've already got a play and cast for next week. Well, maybe you could postpone them and use my play instead. It's another great thriller. I play another fellow who's cold, calculating, 
Ruthless. Ruthless. Ruthless, yeah, ruthless. I always make that same mistake. <laughs> but, Jack, next week is the night before Christmas Eve, and naturally, we're bringing our audience something very much in the holiday spirit. What's it going to be, Bill? A bright and sparkling musical starring one of the most popular singers in America, Dick Hames. <laughs> Co-starred with oh. Dick are two of our favorites, <laughs> Maureen O'Hara and Barry Sullivan. Appearing in 20th Century Fox's recent screen hit, Do You Love Me? It's a story of comedy, music, and romance, with Dick Hames bringing you the songs that helped to make the screenplay so successful. Oh, it sounds like a wonderful play for the holidays, Bill. I'm sure your audience will love it. I agree, but how about my play, Bill? What about the week after next? You have that set, too, haven't you, Bill? That's right. Well, uh, how about the week after that? Uh, Jack, I'm afraid we're all balked up for the third week, too. Well, look, Bill, will you call me any time in the next few months? I'll be waiting to hear from you. <laughs> sure, Jack. Uh, do, do I have your number? Uh, you don't need my number. I'll be waiting in the wings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jack. And for tonight, at least, our most sincere thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night, Bill. Oh, Bill, Bill, by the way, I don't like to bring this up, but it's close to the holidays, and every little bit helps, so... Well, you know, uh, haven't I got something coming to me for tonight's performance? Oh, yes, Jack. Where do you want it, in the abdomen or in the back? <laughs> in the side pocket. <laughs> Good night, Jack. <laughs> Good night, Jack and Jack. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Maureen O'Hara, Dick Hames, and Barry Sullivan in Do You Love Me? This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. It's pretty good to find more meat in the stores these days, isn't it? Well, that means you'll have more used fat to turn in for cash. Now, there are two good things about that. You get more money because lots of dealers are paying higher prices for used fats, and besides that, you're helping to make the things you want. Soap, as well as cars, refrigerators, electrical appliances, and such things. So, long as the oil supply stays short, please save every drop of used fat and turn it in. Gail Patrick will soon be seen in Republic Pictures, The Plainsman and the Lady. Heard in our cast tonight were Alan Reed as Brady, Gerald Moore as Norton, Gigi Pearson as Peaches, Gail Gordon as Dr. Elberon, Norman Field as the mayor, and Eric Snowden, Herbert Bygren, Edwin Max, Eddie Marr, Ed Emerson, Jay Novello, Dick Ryan, Ken Christie, Charles Seal, and Franklin Parker. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our men and women overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Do You Love Me? with Dick Hames, Maureen O'Hara, and Barry Sullivan. Rely on Spry, S-P-R-Y. Yes, it's Spry for the most delicious Christmas eggnog pie you ever tasted. See the Spry ad in December Women's Magazine for the amazing can't-fail way to make flaky tender pastry every time. You'll hear him say... Mmm, wonderful. The reason why... S-P-R-Y. For all you bake and fry, rely on Spry. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Do You Love Me? with Dick Hames, Maureen O'Hara, and Barry Sullivan. And why not tune in a half hour earlier to hear Joan Davis? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>